morning fine people yep it is uh, an update for day three of tour it's actually morning of day four we weren't able to get no internet of any significance here 100 megabytes can't upload videos on that um, so we're in the sparkling town of Fonsales Rus. Fonsales Rus, that's very close to the border of Botswana. Um, this is our little um, B&B quarters for those of you that enjoy following the tour and the living standards and all the bike kits outside the rooms. Uh, the rooms all have names and uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things today. I'm going to talk to you about the USD JPYIII. Yes, I'm going to talk to you about that uh, while I show you down there, bar, restaurant, uh, and walk around and show you the complex. Yes, so a couple of big reset developments and um, of course an FX development. So the reset development that's getting a lot of coverage at the moment is um, Pfizer Gate. Yeah. Pfizer gate the the inject uh, eugenicist criminals uh, Pfizer gate in fact it would be absolutely terrible if you guys went and found the Pfizer gate Twitter handle please don't do this and retweeted all the aspects that are coming out on the documents about what has and hasn't been done uh, to hide what wasn't tested recently many of you will have heard that they simply didn't um, test. Nice little uh, garden, they made an effort, haven't they? Places otherwise are shit all over town. Um, but they made a recent very big effort to expose certain people. Uh, the fact that they never even tested transmission. Remember all that? You're taking the shot to save granny. You're doing this to save granny. It's not just about you. You're selfish if you say no. Remember all that? Um, yeah, I think you do. I think you do indeed. Um, we all saved Granny, only they killed Granny. They put them all in care homes, stacked the old and sick on top of each other, and gave them Remdesivir, which pretty much was lethal. But anyway, um, I'm not going to go too far on that one, but I just want to highlight to you: there's a twin, a twending. <laughs> That's what you say in the morning this early. A trending Twitter. Uh, link called um, Pfizer Gates. Go and have a check it out. Geez, all the guys are up already. It's almost uh, he's dressed like a girl. You see, we always like a transgender representative on tour, don't we, Ollie? He's uh, part way through um, handing over his bit, bits, his slack to somebody else. Um, anyway, so um, or, or either that or his uh, relative of David Beckham. Um, Anyway, so uh, it's only quarter to uh, six. It's like 5.45, 5.50 the morning. Everyone's up. Uh, this is pretty impressive. Um, so that's the one thing. The, uh, the, the FX pair that I want to talk about it, uh, right now is USD JPY. Um, and what's been going down there? Now the USD JPY has been an unbelievable kicker again. Um, and in our community, we had a number of new members or people that hadn't taken the first opportunity or a number of the uh, follow-up opportunities to get long yen. And in fact, I'd even taken off at one point uh, a certain amount for reasons of um, balancing up with more Korean ones in terms of our FX trades of the day. There's our morning prayer team over there uh, surveilling the five-star swimming pool. Um, Excuse me. So, uh, there recently was uh, in our premium group uh, another opportunity coming, but it's, it was the classic most difficult opportunity in technical analysis, and we suspected that. And this happens essentially quite often. It's happened in Bitcoin uh, a lot once a meme of buying is really developing. In other words, many people in the uh, the FX world understand the concept of yield curve control. Show you the, I don't know how much of the town in the background you'll see, you're not missing much. Um, you're missing the sun coming up over there. Um, it's gonna get hot. I was hoping for a bit more cloud cover. 
we're going to be soaking those uh, cooling vests in uh, ice water and wearing those today. Anyway, so most people are looking for opportunities to get back into these trades. But the thing is, the big money have worked out that this thing only goes down. The yen going down, the USD, JPY uh, go up. What typical footprints in the sand as a tracker to get into something that has to devalue substantially but keeps squeezing higher. And um, we scenario casted the typical most difficult uh, technical pattern to break into um, a time like this. Beautiful morning actually, it's the best temperature of the day. Um, and that is the three impulse uh, rising wedge. Um, and we saw that the yen having made its big target of one, uh, what was it, 144s? Um, it was grinding quite a long time in there. It pulled back to 139 and it bounced around and it was grinding, but it would had a sort of by the dip, very steep basing ascending grind line under it and wasn't making too much upside progress. It would go marginally higher, higher, then pull back. So, any, any people that were traditional technical analysts, analysts um, that bought the new high usually got shaked straight into some form of a, a fizzle. The fizzles slowly get slower, but the best way for uh, getting in recently came and uh, quite a lot of our community were able to buy into the yen and I stocked up on yen uh, at the 143s, 144s and now we've almost gotten 149 um, this morning and I think again this is going to be another spell of very aggressive upside for that particular currency pair. And this comes down to many people don't, you know, everybody's all over Britain and it's failing pension scheme and all its malaise and mostly over Europe. Particularly if you're in America, it's almost like it's your younger brother, uh, even though it's your older brother, uh, or your smaller older brother that you love to beat up on. Because they kind of, you know, many European heritages in America, they're always validating, I'm so glad I left Europe and went to America. So there's this thing in American media that it's just great to talk about an utter malaise in Europe all the time, and even uh, to some degree the UK. Um, what we tend not to do is get much Eastern media coverage of uh, the full extent of the malaise in Korea, South Korea. Uh, and Japan and even amazingly although uh, frenemy enemy but supplier chain uh, critical China um, and the debt based issues when I've looked at the property what they did whilst creating heat in the global economy during the great financial crisis and the subsequent recovery years they took it to a next level of absolute corruption and abuse of their citizens who were buying property to uh, make up part of their wealth. They have, as I've already mentioned, a bit of a femicide that used to go on. I think that's easing up a little bit now, but essentially women are premium. So wherever you suppress, you elevate elsewhere. This is Demartini, who I give a lot of credit for this, and I see it in markets, I see it in many things. You kill baby girls in, as fetuses, you make the ones that get born highly valuable. Simple as that. And you have the biggest incel male community. What do they do to attract women? They've got to show that they've got balance sheet. All this pressure is on the men to actually, you know, because there's tons of them, um, to show that they have value and will give the woman a great life. So they make it harder. So whatever you do on one side, you elevate uh, in, in the same sphere somewhere else. This is the great cause of disbalance in nature. In the same way as injecting mercury-based experimental mRNA adjusting and editing uh, will absolutely mess with and cause subsequent reactions and autoimmune diseases, etc. in your physical body system. Which is why our great goal is to pursue truth. And on the vaccine, we have absolutely been validated. Countless sportsmen saying, I think everybody should do this. I'm going to do it. Don't be afraid. Uh, only later to be reported dead. The number that I have uh, for that is obscene. The number of fallen sports stars that they no longer cover anymore that have taken vaccines. And believe it or not, they are still 
trying to push boosters. So I've managed to pivot from USD JPY to Demartini to back to vaccines. But the concept of this is the yen and the Asian currencies are our premium communities must have trades over Britain and the euro. And you've also got to remember that they all dollar dominance generally. They all dollar dominance. So if you are to do those two trades, you already have twice correlation in them. Um, you will have runs at the, which won't be synchronized on occasion and one might do more on occasion. Uh, and in the great blow off, we have a real target for the Korean one. We have a HVF real target. Our eight, first HVF target is, for the yen has already actually been made. And we have over performance uh, trumpet only. And you can learn how what that is by going to uh, the market sniper.com so we have a method for it but it's not as precise um, as uh, uh, a, a key level that has to be run a horizontal price level it's a different technique for managing over performance so I, I almost um, think the, the one is the premium trade but the yen is going to probably go 230 250 and some north in a blow-off moment potentially quite a bit more um, so, uh, and they are absolutely known to be doing this yield curve control concept. So it should be anyone who's an FX trader and anyone who isn't but would like to enter, your wannabe get in trade. If it's not number one, it's number two with a one to have an Asian short and a dollar long um, out of those two. That doesn't mean Hong Kong dollar isn't there, but you're going to sit and wait. The difference is these will give you now. As we get nearer to the blow-off stage, as my, as my assessment is that that's coming, I'm going to be low adding the Hong Kong dollars because that instantly plays catch-up. So I don't think we're urgent, urgent there. On that key point on the USD Hong Kong dollar, if you are following the Market Sniper on Twitter, um, I did tweet out the record epic dump in reserves of Hong Kong. So while saying I don't think it happens today or next week necessarily, there was an epic reserve dump of dollars uh, in the Hong Kong uh reserve ratio. So they have to report those dollar holdings and it was the biggest ever decline. And I've warned and I've shared the charts in little transgender boxes how that pubic hair that trimmed with a number one pubic bone is leaning up with that stubble, uh, little wicky wicky wackies um, all the way along that uh, top end of the range. And the longer it is there, it is being maintained there. And again, as Di Martini says, the more you hold down, the more that you hold down. When eventually you release, you overcompensate and overshoot to the other side for all that you've spent holding a fake market. The whole concept of this is price discovery, guys. This is a price discovery discussion. All these fucking manipulators, all these fucking stand in the way of gravity guys, end up getting crushed by boulders. Um, because you've got to let things go to where they need to go. Otherwise, you create distortions that then lead to further build-up forces that lead to damn wall bursts. USD Hong Kong dollar is a nothing, nothing, nothing damn wall burst. Yen is a consistent bleed up, hold after a target, pause for a while, talking tough. We're going to intervene, we're going to intervene, when you're already intervening like absolute fuck. And then boom, 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 yeah, another surge and you're ready for the next spill. So... If you're talking about pensions being a failure in Britain, you can also talk about the Japanese economy, which is bigger than Britain's and absolutely is in the same favor, uh, place and already has its government on about 62, 70%. I don't know the number anymore of uh, the government debt. So they are, the BOJ is toxic bank. It is toxic bank that is holding pensions together for a demographically very aging population with very few young people to sustain a huge, they live long, the Japanese, uh, almost inverted pyramid of elderlies. You're talking about Japan is an old age home where everybody requires pension and the government is toxic bank holding all the shit that they bought and that shit was bought by the wives 
because the Japanese men culturally typically give three quarters of the wages to the wife to buy BOJ uh, bonds because that's what they thought was safe and secure for their future and pension. That's what you were told by IFAs. I am your IFA. Those IFAs are trained with garbage. They sent to fucking do exams and read shit to spew out well bonds are less volatile and safer than equities and then then there's higher risk now garbage garbage they all programmed and pumped garbage and told what they can and can't say and they push the standard system that gets people investing in government debt as a concept and as a principle when it isn't worth the shit and we're coming to end of season reset economics where all that advice is absolutely destructive to your financial standing and i'm here to warn you and i have been warning you because i'm trying to help people from buying bullshit from programmed fools that are representing a criminal cartel let me say that again my sole role here on this channel hit the like button if you appreciate that is to try help people to not buy bullshit from qualified IFAs with a certificate and a qualification even. They may have a fucking MBA. I don't care. I have one too. I know what they teach you there. Um, that do not prepare you for sound money, thinking the likes of Hayek, for sound money in reset season where all the rules that used to apply no longer will apply and the things they tell you were the safest are now the most vulnerable and likely to go to zero or be bailed in into a UBI or a CBDC. I'm here telling you that to save you from that eventuality. And I keep saying it in many different ways and I keep highlighting the USD JPY trade is in essence the comparison between two nation states bias towards that, one with the worst demographics you could possibly have, very low birth rates, and a huge amount of government debt, unbelievable, one of the highest on record, although America's officially with its uh, liabilities and not on balance sheets, even worse, um, and and doing yield curve control is that demartini sustain the ponzi we've got to keep the balance sheet representing that it's worth that much think of my narrative of the tg pink crocs um if i entered such a business late and i have a million of them printed up 3d printed and nobody wants to buy them but i maintain that they are hundred dollars a pair and they trade with no volume no one buys my $100 pink, ugly, 90s, so 90s Crocs um, that I've printed up that are a copy of a rubber shoe that was made by a company I've already mentioned. Um, and I can continue to maintain I'm not insolvent because I have a warehouse full of a million pairs, all valued at $100. That's a current asset. The minute I let one pair go for $5, the mark-to-market price has dropped by 95% and everything in that inventory room cannot be valued at anything more than $5 if I was lucky and able to find another million people ready to buy even at $5 um, which you could make a case against wouldn't happen I'd probably have to write it all off and give it away to the poor people uh, and the townships could have kiddies running around in pink shoes for the next decade so that is essentially the Ponzi scheme that the Bank of Jan in Japan is continuing to do to represent their balance sheet as uh, keeping the, they're not so toxic because the bonds are worth that, only there's zero trade. There's zero trade. How can you have? Volume in technical analysis is a validator of participation at a certain price level. High volumes, uh, sustained periods of high volume validate the price at those levels. Um, no volume trades are, is a very eerie hanging in the air, um, could hit an air pocket, could get a thermal, could any with anything. Um, and it often happens after a volatility squeeze. We get lower volatility and lower volume. Remember, they're different. When you see the words vol, it refers to volatility, not volume. Okay, so the USD JPY is uh, a break in trade that uh, our guys took in at 140.40 and it's now running back up to 149 and I could see 150 falling and it's going to be a big psychological moment and people will maybe have a look at Japan at that point and then at that point it has a pullback again and it might recreate another squeezy squeezy three impulse rising wedge. Okay, that's the big lesson for today for tour day three. I'm actually 
got some footage and snippets, but I need places to work, I need time to work, and I need proper internet. Uh, and there seems to be a mobile tower there, but uh, we got 100 megabits on a voucher, and you can beg for another one, and then you just have a guy who shared a bunch of pictures from tour in the WhatsApp group, and boom, your 100 megabits is gone. Um, and you can't stop it from downloading. So um, there will be some riding clips hopefully going up. Some of them might come up a little bit late. So we finished day three, uh, had a real wide knuckle ride coming in at about 80 k's per hour into very deep sand and then just gassing it and, and at one point hitting 100 uh, and you just see that handlebar doing this. Uh, so it was uh, pretty, pretty intense. Uh, but managed to stay on um, but yeah we'll see the soft sand is a challenge um, on the big bikes but other than that having a good time and uh, still alive uh, wearing the safety equipment hoping to stay in the salad uh, salad in the saddle and uh, <laughs> stay in the salad um, and uh, enjoy the ride yeah okay um, so USD JPY Pfizer gate them bastards um, don't forget to accidentally pop by and don't retweet all the news that is now leaking out about what pigs they've been and of course they're going to try bring a, a winter booster here but the, it might get quite a cold reception um, and you may find that they'll just pivot to the geopolitical stuff the Russia Ukraine thing as a parting shot is getting escalated into a far more potentially nasty uh, war um watch out on that and that ain't going to help energies and that ain't going to help cpi and that's going to keep the fed tightening and it's all about making the pain and the policy error of continually tightening and destroying the rest of the world that has been my opinion from the get-go from the beginning thank you to those guys by the way somebody asked some high profile guy some blue tick guy who's the most underrated macro guy in twitter and a number of people said market sniper um, called the top of the bond market, been dollar dominant, stuck with it the whole way, hasn't chickened out even after it's moved. Uh, the oil dipped to single digits. They seem to list quite a few things that I do sometimes mention myself. I appreciate it. It's, it's great. It helps us get followers. It helps us scale up. It will help us invest more in video equipment, uh, updates, everything. So thank you to those who follow on Twitter and give us credit when we do it. We don't want any undue credit. We want it when we do it. You can always be wrong. All of that good stuff. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching, guys. And from uh, probably about 10 past, quarter past six in the morning here, in not too far from the Botswana border, I say goodbye.